Reprise de débat. Resuming the debate, the Honourable Member for Courtney Alberney. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I'll be splitting my time with a member from Vancouver Island, North Powell River, uh, who's a strong advocate for veterans, and I want to thank her for her hard work on the veterans file. Uh, Madam Speaker, um, I want to thank the member also from Brantwood Brant for tabling today's motion. Um, before I get started, I, I do want to recognize the veterans that are standing outside. Uh, their voice is very important today, uh, left out in the cold, and uh, is, their, is their theme today. But it's about veterans falling through the cracks. And I want to thank my colleague from the Liberal Party previous to me for talking about imagining us not playing politics on this issue. And, and I don't think any of us want to be playing politics or talking politics about our veterans. What veterans want is what was promised to them, and they want the service that's expected uh, to them. Madam Speaker, there's 29,000 veterans waiting, waiting right now for their disability claim to be processed. And in fact, that's a 50% increase over the last eight months. So, you know, when we talk about not being uh, political and not playing political games, it's really tough when we hear from the government side their boisterous announcements and their boisterous uh, rhetoric around how they're treating veterans when veterans can't get service for the announcements they're making. When they can't get service, then the benefits don't matter when they can't access them, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, new Democrats and Canadians love and respect our veterans, and we thank them and their families for their selfless service and sacrifice. And I really want to underscore their families because they were really left out in the cold in the recent announcements that this government has made and their promises. And the motion today, and I, I will stay on the motion now, uh, the events of the Prime Minister's Edmonton Town Hall, the meeting of February 1st, left many of us confused, bewildered and angry. This is, after all, a Prime Minister who during the last election made two specific promises to Canada's veterans, to re-establish lifelong pensions and to ensure that no veteran would ever be forced to fight their own government for the support and compensation that they deserve. What we know is that the Liberal leader and the Prime Minister has completely reneged on those commitments to Canada's veterans. And what happened in Edmonton is that he was called out for breaking those promises by Corporal Brock Blazik, Blazik a brave gentleman, as we know, who has both the courage to fight and defend the interests of Canada in an armed war zone and to confront our Prime Minister for failing him and his co colleagues. We salute, salute your courage on both accounts, Mr. Uh, Corporal uh, Blazik. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I'd like to read some of Mr. Blazik's question and the Prime Minister's response into the record. Mr. Blazik said, quote, on August 24, 2015, you made the promise, and I'll quote it here, uh, Madam Speaker, no veteran will be forced to fight their own government for the support and compensation they have earned. Yet you are still currently in a legal battle with veterans regarding equal support and compensation to their peers. There are two standards, those before 2006 and after, one under the old Pension Act and one under the new lump sum regime. My question is, what veterans were you talking about? Honestly, Mr. Prime Minister, I was prepared to be injured in the line of duty when I joined the military. I was prepared to be killed in action. What I wasn't prepared for, Mr. Prime Minister, is Canada turning its back on me. In response, the Prime Minister said, thank you for your passion and your strength and for being here today to share your justifiable frustration and anger with me and all of us here. First of all, why are we still fighting against certain veteran groups in court? Because, the Prime Minister says, they are asking for more than we are able to give uh, them right now. Kidding me? He said, yeah, this is what the Prime Minister said. He said, hang on, you're asking for an honest answer. And uh, we know that the Prime Minister said this, and veterans had to hear this, uh, across our country. This is when the government's spending lots of money, whether it be an $8 million hockey rink outside that won't be used by most Canadians and certainly most veterans. This is when CEOs on Bay Street are getting stock option loopholes that cost taxpayers almost a billion dollars. The Prime Minister is telling veterans he can't fulfill his election promise. And so here we are today, a Liberal leader that makes bold new promises to address a massive social injustice. The Canadians who desperately need this assistance buy into and elect the Liberals to govern, 
take photos with Liberal government uh, members when they're in campaigning. And then once they are elected, the Liberal government fundamentally changes, changes its position and abandon its promise. At one time, the love and respect that was felt by Canadians for our veterans and their families was clear and obvious in their treatment by our government. Lifelong pensions, the creation of wartime housing limited that my friend from uh, Saanich Gulf Islands talked about, and complete coverage for all disabilities incurred during service were just some of the ways this love was shown to veterans by our government on behalf of Canadians. Indeed, it is widely agreed that at one point in time, our government firmly believed that it had a sacred obligation to care for our veterans and their families in exchange for their selfless sacrifice. Something we voted on last night, Ms. Uh, Madam Speaker, that all parties except for the government voted on, my colleague from Barry Innisfail, who tabled that bill. This obligation was a clear acknowledgement that when a woman or man entered into service of our country and put their health and life on the line for us, that our government would be there to care for them for the rest of their lives, Madam Speaker. I say that we believe that at one point in time, because I am no longer sure that that is the case. The Harper Conservative government made an effort to modernize the rights, services and benefits provided to Canada's veterans. But in reality, they inadvertently made life worse for many. The lump sum payment option for veterans was certainly one of the worst policies they brought forward. And it's in, in, important to mention, in the interest of full disclosure, that the NDP did vote in support of the new Veterans Charter when it was brought in before the House. However, the difference between us and the Conservatives is that once the problem became obvious, such as the lump sum payment option, we proposed to fix those issues. Unfortunately, the Conservatives and their Veterans Affairs Ministers quite literally turned their backs on those in need by not supporting the need to reverse that. For now, his part, the Liberal leader and the Prime Minister made lofty goals, as we know, and raised expectations so high for so many people in need, including veterans. But it's now obvious that those crisp and clear Liberal promises were designed for a quick headline and to trick Canadians into voting for a progressive agenda that they had no intention of implementing once they were in power. New Democrats will always work with other parties. We're here to do that today, Madam Speaker, in the best interests of veterans. But to do so, we must commit to remembering the past, not erasing it. And we must never forget our collective failings. It's society and government. It's all of our responsibility to take care of and look after veterans who are exposed to Agent Orange, nuclear radiation, and other lethal and debilitating uh, toxins and agents in their course of their service. The horrific sexual trauma that has been endured by many military personnel, particularly women, over the course of their military service. The serious psychiatric side effects associated with the use of the anti-malarial drug mefloquine. The widespread prevalence, prevalence of operational stress uh, injury, post-traumatic stress disorder, and the psychological challenges faced by active and retired armed for forces personnel and the unconscionable transition gap, which I alluded to earlier, which denies benefits to so many benefits who are transitioning from active duty to civilian life. A particularly stark example of how our governments have changed the way they serve veterans is with housing. Wartime Housing Limited was created after World War II to transfer 30,000 affordable homes to veterans. But we heard in the Veterans Affairs Committee this week that as many as 5,000 veterans are homeless and living on our streets today. Like our friends that are here visiting, Trevor Sanderson and Dick Groot, who have been camping out just a, a couple blocks from here, Madam Speaker, to raise awareness around this issue. And of course, the unintended and negative consequences experienced by our veterans as a result of changes under the new Veterans Charter. The Equitas lawsuit, which seeks to reestablish the old lifelong pension regime, began under the Harper Conservatives, whose defence in court was to argue that the Government of Canada has no sacred obligation to take care of our veterans who are injured while defending our country and our interests. It was a shameful line of defence taken by the last Government and former uh, Ministers of uh, Veterans Affairs who sit here today and complain that the Government is treating veterans exactly the same way they did. What is clear today, Madam Speaker, is that the Liberal Government, like the Conservative gov Government before them, have failed to live up to their promises to veterans. New Democrats will not allow the Liberal Prime Minister to adopt the shameful legacy of the last Conservative Prime Minister without answering to our veterans and Canadians. We we'll hope that they'll do that today with a different tone. Instead of just this boisterous attitude of all these announcements, apologizing to the veterans for the comments that were made by the Prime Minister would be the right thing to do, Madam Speaker. And he owes that apology to Mr. Bla Corporal Blazek and all veterans. 
An apology is clearly needed, and that is why we will support this motion, Madam Speaker. Thank you.